Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Income Gaming, Cheltenham's premier friendly local game store. Check the link in the description. With two appearing in the Dwarven Mountain Holds Battalion box, as well as some pretty handy rules if you've got Movement 3 Dwarves, it's always good to have some monstrous cavalry in your army list. I think we're going to see quite a few gyrocopters around in Warhammer the Old World. The Dwarf Gyrocopter has seen many iterations over the years, and I believe this first one was designed by Mark Copplestone. The next iteration kept very much the same theme, very merry minimal, designed by Norman Swales and Michael Perry. And that 1993 version had a fairly long life. Eight years later, in February 2001, this slightly larger model turned up. Then we have an even longer gap till February 2014 in the launch of the Dwarf 8th edition army book. And we have this dual kit. You can make a gyrocopter or a gyro bomber. And here is that kit assembled as a gyrocopter. It remains the current kit and is what's going to be re-released in 2024, 10 years on. And you know what, it still stands up pretty well. It's very much a modern design plastic kit. And I don't think it looks too out of place. No wonder it's survived through Age of Sigmar for all of those years. Now I've built it in a way that's slightly less complicated here. I left a few of the little extra details off the rotor blades at the top just trying to tone it down a little bit and make it a little bit easier to build and paint. Welcome to Miniature Realms, my name's Stuart and in this video I'm going to show you how I painted my gyrocopters for my army. As I've already mentioned, I simplified the rotor blade assembly slightly just to make it a little bit more in line with some of the older sculpts and a little bit less complicated to stick together, a little bit less fragile. And I'm painting this the way I would do for my army. So it's one of those, it's not full tutorial, take away from it what you like. I've got some white here in the airbrush and I'm just first building up some underpainting layers where I'm going to apply the blue which is my color scheme for my army so I'm working where there's going to be blue and where there's going to be white building up a slight bit of a fade lighter towards the bottom of the body of the gyrocopter a little bit darker towards the top and when we apply the blue layers you'll see the reason I've done that going to be using some masking during this video and, and some of the skills that I use while painting tanks and things but I move on to a Kellen green so I'm building up very thin layers with the Crocs or Gore Green here. It's a little dash of water in there just to help it flow a little bit better. And now the underpainted fuselage from the dark at the top to the white at the bottom transition will show through these thin layers. And that's the reason I did that in the first place. So working with the underpainting here. And I stupidly got my hand in the way of the camera shot here. It's not like that all the way through the video. And all will become clear in a moment when I finally move my hand out of the way. But I've used the masking tape to mask off a line down the center so half of this fuselage is going to be blue the other half is going to be white which is my army colors and uh, this will really really help for those later layers that I build up with the later blues so now you can see the blue without my hand in the way and you can see cursed blue and ray gun blue from two thin coats and they're the mid and lighter tones part of a triad and I'm using that as my dwarf colors and if you've watched any of my previous dwarf videos for this army you'll have seen those colors before so I'm going in with the mid tone first again just accentuating where the lighter areas are trying to avoid the darker blue tone towards the top of the fuselage there just catching on the edge of the wing and then I go in with the even lighter tone and just push that highlight a little bit further. Uh, so we're going to use a lot of masking and I'm now turning to liquid mask and I'm painting that over all the areas that I don't want to get covered right now because I'm going to be airbrushing some metallics so it's pretty much covering in all of the white areas and all of the areas of the blue and I won't show you all of the painting of it because it's really really boring but it's great stuff. Now it's time for some decayed metal. I'm sticking with the airbrush here just to speed things up. You could very much just paint this in with a hairy brush. And because I've masked everywhere that I don't want this paint color on, I can just use the airbrush to go in and spray all of that kind of engine area, all of the metallics from the rotor blades, the, the kind of the engine parts at the back and things. And again, I've got my hand in front of the camera. Luckily, there's not too much more airbrushing. Now we move on to black metal also from scale color, as was the first one. And working over the top with that decayed metal is just leaving a little bit of that, that brownish copperish color showing through underneath, just creating a little bit of depth, making it look old and dirty and, and well used. 
before moving on to Game Air Silver, which is the highlight stage of those metals. And again, the same areas, but leaving both of the colors showing before. It's almost layering with the airbrush, focusing towards where the light would hit at the top here, trying to make sure that both those previous tones are showing through. Now it's time to start peeling all that masking type off, which is really, really fun until you break something, but it doesn't happen very often. And just see here, I've got a ball of the, the masking tape and just rub it along the, the other stuff and it just rubs it off, which is really fantastic. I've already taken it off the sides of the fuselage there and you can see the paint is protected underneath. Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Baron of Dice, premium wargaming dice. Over 500 styles, over 4,000 customer reviews. Welcome to the best dice on the planet. And for those of you dwarf fans out there watching this video, Baron of Dice have the perfect dice for you. And of course they cover the other factions as well, but some absolutely beautiful looking dice there. Really, really good customer reviews. And if you head to the link in the video description, you can get 5% off with the discount code miniature realms. You should definitely go and check them out. And at this stage, we have all the airbrushing done. We have the white and we have the blue down and we have the base metallics down as well. So what we need to do now is just a little bit of tidying up bits where there is a little bit of bleed through the masking or bits you just can't get to that way. So it's time for the hairy brush and the same metallic paints and just to get them out and go and fill things in. So here we start with a little bit of decayed metal where some blue has bled through and then once we've built that up we go back in with the the black metal and then a little bit of the game air silver on top afterwards and, and so on and so on around the whole gyrocopter there's little areas here at the front and this is the brimstone cannon i believe even though i won't always be taking that option you get three options to build on the kit itself but there's lots of little areas like this where you just can't get to or mask properly so they're going to have paint on so i'm just filling these in with the normal hairy brush it takes no time at all and it's definitely a lot quicker than going in and painting it all with the hairy brush so if you have an airbrush i definitely recommend using it for things like this now if you don't have an airbrush don't panic, um, don't switch off. There are still things here you could do. I would probably spray with a rattle can, something like a lead belcher type of color, and then just hand paint in the other colors. That's what you do anyway. You can still follow the rest of the tips and things in this video. Just because you don't have an airbrush doesn't mean there won't be any things here that you can take away and maybe move into your own painting. But before long, I've worked my way around both of the miniatures. I'm actually painting a second one off camera most of the time. Worked my way around and touched up all of the metallics on both gyrocopters and we're nearly ready for the next stage. And that stage is a little bit more touch up. I'm actually using some blue gray here from model color because it most closely matches the, the darker tone of the gray white that we need underneath. And again, just where there's a little bit of bleed through from the masking on the edge of the rotor plates there towards the, the closer metallic parts. And then there's a little bit around the edge of the cockpit itself, which is I think going to be some leather or something like that. So I'm just filling that out so that I can paint that in with a contrast base layer a little bit later on. I'm also picking out these large areas of stitching which are on the wings as well. Those are going to have a contrast layer as a base as well and it will take them much better if I can cover them in a, in a lighter colour to start with. Now this is Vallejo Express Colour Templar White and this is their own version of Apothecary White um, contrast paint if, you, if you've got that. And I'm just using it to glaze here a little bit on the darker areas of the blade towards the lighter areas just glazing between the two filling it out and it does a little bit to blend between the two stages but also shades a little bit where it's needed. Using the same method on the white side of the fuselage here as well, just getting into that sort of knot work detail there. And we will be using oil paints later on and that will cover most of what I'm doing here, but it just helps smooth out where the transitions are a little bit jonky. And once that's all done, it's time to start adding in some other detail. And this is Viking Gold from the same scale color metallics. I do love these metallic paints. I've struggled to find some better all-rounders. They're fantastic with the hairy brush and thin really, really nicely and go through the airbrush as well. Very, very small um, metal flakes in them. So it's very, very smooth metallic paints. Um, just really, really fantastic. And as I said, the best all-rounders I've found. 
Now I'm taking my time here just to pick out all of the detail. You've got these little knot work areas and this sort of golden shield, or what will be golden when I finish painting it, shield area on the front of the fuselage there. And this Viking gold gives a nice warm gold tone, not too desaturated, quite vibrant. Um, and it's a really nice base layer for all the golds I'm going to be using in my army. Nice highlight for that I find is Elven Gold also from that same metal and alchemy range from scale colour. I'm not covering the whole area so I'm just focusing on the top curves of this little knot work here on the side of the fuselage. When we get to the shield I find it's nice just to work towards the, the top areas first picking out some of the, the higher areas of detail making sure I'm still leaving some of that Viking Gold showing through underneath. So as we continue the base layers, this is contrast cycle brown, nice deep rich reddish brown which you'll seen on many of my tutorials, it's a bit of a favourite at the moment. And this is a really nice dark leather colour which I think is perfect for his leather helmet and I'm painting it as leather and his leather jacket thinking very much World War II RAF vibes going on here. At the same time, I'm also using it on that sort of leather padding that's on the sides of the fuselage where the pilot would climb in and out. Then turning to those large areas of stitching or whatever it is on the side of the wing here that I mentioned earlier on that I, I painted in that white greyish colour. I'm just going over those now with that same Saigor brown and it just goes over them so much easier and shows up a much brighter with that lighter colour underneath. I wanted a slightly different brown for the glove so I'm using the trusty Garagax sewer. Again, so much brown leather involved in a lot of these miniatures and I like to just use a few different tones to sort of differentiate between the few. It's very, very hard for you to see what's going here. And then moving on to the tiny little bit of skin that's showing, I'm actually using dwarf skin, which is a Vallejo Express colour as well. And I've used this method in a lot of my tutorials recently, so I won't go through it here. I do use some other colours as well, but there's so little showing that it's impossible to show you here. So if you check out any of my recent skin tutorials on all of the dwarf videos and he uses the method there so if you're really interested in a skin recipe you're better off going to check one of those where there's a little bit more skin on show now to some nasdrag yellow contrast paint and that's going to be the color of the dwarf's hair or in this case what's showing is his beard and then on to some contrast skeleton horde i just want to sort of dirty down the color of the fur lined jacket his leather jacket there now i'm, I'm not going to go back and highlight this what i've done is place it on the miniature which has already it's got that sort of zenithal prime thing going on and just thinned it slightly so that the lighter layers are showing through really really nicely and i don't really go back and do too much to this later on at all Returning to the contrast cycle brown, it's quite a deep, rich colour this, and it paints over metallics and things quite well. I'm using it here to go over the, the cam belts, I suppose they are, in, in the mechanics on the back of the gyrocopter. They do have some teeth underneath, but I would think they would be sort of leatherish with, with metal on there. There's definitely no links in the chain on, they look smooth, so I've decided to go for them as a strong leather thing here. Who knows, we can paint them whatever you like. Well, I've decided just to make the, the engine a little bit different, break up that metal a little bit and make them leather. Sticking with contrast paints, we have Pilar Glacier. It's not a paint I use very often in my collection, but on the goggles of this pilot, which are still white at this stage, I'm just adding a little bit of this in, quite thick, so that it flows around the edges and, and leaves a little bit of white showing in the middle. And you can go back with a little touch of white afterwards, but it gives a really nice goggle glazed glass effect. Back to Vallejo model colour now, and we have some flat earth. I'm just going to use this to highlight the gloves, just to in a single layer of highlight here. They're quite shadowed, they don't need too much, and they're very, very hidden away in the fuselage. Their model colour again, whole red and German camo, pale brown, and this is the trusty highlight that I've been using a lot recently to the cycle brown contrast paint. And this does get two layers of highlighting as it's a little bit more visible. Um, I decided to, to leave the rider in the, the fuselage for painting. It does say in the instructions to paint first before gluing him in there, but uh, I really try to avoid sub-assemblies when, when I can such a pain sticking things together afterwards when they're painting and you can mess up your paint jobs when you're doing that anyway so it's totally up to you uh, i really didn't find it very hard painting what's visible um, when it was already glued together so my advice would be just glue it together it's, it's easy enough to get to if anything leave the actual rotor blades off the top that might make some areas a little bit easier to get to but all in all i wouldn't change anything I'd say fully assemble them and, and paint them that way unless you're painting for competition then then it's very, very different board game then 
The technique is very, very traditional layering here. So the whole red is your first highlight and then much thinner lines of the pale brown. And then you can almost paint some scratches and things like that in on the edges of the leather here as well. Back to some two thin coats now and yellow flame. And this is a really, really nice highlight to the Nasdrag yellow. Um, it picks out the, the lighter areas really, really nicely and allows the Nasdrag yellow to do what it does well, which is shade all those recesses. And I, I think it pops quite nicely and don't feel it really needs an extra highlight. Now, if there's a larger area of hair, you might want to add a little bit of white to that mix to really pick out some little areas here, but it's such a small area and I think it looks good as it is. Now, something I don't do with fantasy miniatures that often is add a little bit of gloss varnish. And I'm, I'm careful here just to aim to the fuselage here um, and not get on the rider. It doesn't matter if it goes over onto the metallics at all. And I'm getting it on the rotor blades as well. But I do want to keep it off the rider. It's so I can use these oil paints. This is grease and dark mud from Scale Color. They're ready mixed oil paints. I'm using them in place of sort of standard Jenny's Workshop style washes or Army Painter style washes here because they clean up really, really nicely. So I'm adding the darker shade on all of the metallic areas. Um, now I use the grease most often in my army and I've been using that on metallic armor and things, but because this is mechanical uh, metallic area, something that would be greasy and oily, I'm using the, the darker tone, pretty much slopping it all over here. It runs into the recesses like a, a wash, like Agrax Earth shade doesn't do. Well, the new ones are a little bit better at that, but you can be a lot looser with the way you work here. And if you do get it on anywhere you don't want it to, it's quite easy to wipe off afterwards, especially if you've gloss varnished the area. The only thing I'm trying to be careful here is make sure I definitely don't get it on the pilot. Now that we're moving away from the metallic areas, I'm using the grease color, which is more of a sepia tone. I'm just working it away around, first of all, where that stitching is on the side and, and where the metal area joins and feathering it out a little bit. But it doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy. The joys of this, I can go back and clean it up afterwards and I will show you that stage. It's the same with the sides of the fuselage here. I'm focusing around the raised areas where the detail is because I really want this to settle around the detail to add some extra shade there, but also it will look like ingrained dirt when it dries as well to really give that kind of mechanical machinery feel. It just makes it a bit more grim and, and, and dirty. Exactly the same on the other side for the white. It does the same job and this grease color, this sort of sepia tone works really, really nicely with white areas. I'm also using it on my basing in this army. There's not a basing tutorial in, involved in this video. If anyone really wants to know, I'm happy to work through it. I'm just putting this straight on the top of my bases here. That's actually cat sand kitty litter um, and also putting it on my basing texture. We now move on to some artist white spirit. You can use Sansador as well. We just want to stay clear of any of the DIY stuff. It's a little bit too harsh with this. And then just a, a clean brush, but an old one. You don't want to use any that you use for your acrylic painting. Just dampen your brush, have a paper towel handy as well. You just go around where that oil paint is and just feather it out and clean it up. You can wipe it all away if you really wanted to, but what you're trying to do is remove any tide marks and just sort of blend it out and tidy it up a little bit. It gives a very matte finish, so on, maybe on the center of metallic areas or something, you want to wipe it away completely to give that shine back again. But areas like this, just running along, taking away that tide mark, allowing it to stay within all those recesses, creating that shading, creating that dirty look, um, but moving the vibrancy back by taking it off the flat areas, just like I'm doing here on the size of the fuselage. I've talked about this a lot on recent videos, the joys of oil paints and, and why I use them. And because I've got some gloss varnish on this miniature as well, it, it's really easy to move off the, the colored areas. In a lot of my recent tutorials, I've talked about not needing too much to use the gloss varnish for small areas on metallic paints. And, and you, you don't need to do that. I maintain that because I've got some color on this because I've got the white and the blue. I wanted to protect that more and that's why I used the gloss varnish. I didn't want to stain it. So this way I can remove it back to the original color or close to it with a very slight filter on. Whereas I could remove it a little bit, but too much of the white spirit could run the paint down and, and, and wear it away a little bit, but also it will stain it and, and remove some of that vibrancy, which might be a good look, but it wouldn't match the rest of the army. Now, I don't want that to stay glossy. That's the only sort of downside of using a gloss varnish. So I've got some matte varnish here and I've actually thinned it and just added a little bit to an old bit of plastic here. And I'm going to brush paint it on. And the reason I'm not airbrushing it on is because it will dull down all my metallics and take away that shine. I don't want to do that. So it's really just the white and blue areas. I want to add a very thin water down 
coat of matte varnish here. Now this is really thin. I'm almost glazing it on. I don't want any streak marks in it at all. I'd rather do two thin coats of this rather than go on too thick, obscure any detail or leave any horrible sticky fingerprints in. So really, really thin. It's almost like painting on water. It makes a huge difference. We're getting quite close to the end now. So I've got the Game Air Silver back out here and I'm just gonna do a little bit of light dry brushing around the sharper edges of the metal fuselage, just where the paint will have worn off. It kind of works in place as a bit of an edge highlight in some ways. I quite like as it's a war machine for it to look worn and battered and in use so you've got that harsh line at the front there it's gonna maybe hit some some things in the air maybe a few birds it's flown through uh, maybe some rocks have been thrown at it maybe some arrows have been thrown at it who knows but over over time the the paint job will be chipped away so i'm using a lot of the methods that i'd be using if i was painting a, a world war ii tank or uh, maybe even a, a 40k or 30k tank I also find adding a little bit of chipping works really well. This is Rhinox Hide, and I'm just adding that onto the fuselage now. That could be chipping down to primer underneath. It could just be dirt. You can represent whatever you like, but definitely adding a few sponge chip marks of brown just really breaks up that color. And then exactly the same method, just a few little dots here and there of the same Game Air Silver that we use for those sort of edge highlights we did a moment ago. And that's it, all fully based and dry. As those oils dry over sort of 24 hour period, they go really super dry and super matte and it just looks like ingrained dirt and it looks fantastic. And I'm really happy the way these came out. They're relatively simple paint jobs. Some techniques that, that maybe aren't common for everyone, but they're also quite simple to learn. I would encourage people to have a go because you get really unique looking things, especially for the fantasy game. I had lots of fun painting these. These are the first of the plastic gyrocopters I've ever painted. I've owned all the other versions of the sculpts over the years before, but I, I never owned these ones during 8th edition. I had an old metal old army during 8th edition, so I just never got around to buying these. And I really like them. They're really quite characterful. I know they're not everyone's favourite. A lot of people prefer the older sculpts, hoping that Games Workshop brings some of those back on made to order when they do release the, the dwarves, hopefully in a, a week or two time. I'm not quite sure when they're going to be out at the time of recording. They may already be out, but I think the gyrocopters are going to be very, very popular. I think we've already seen them in a lot of army lists from events around the world. They definitely fill a gap in the army list for cavalry that the dwarves don't have or just have something that's able to move fast. And that's why I've got two in my army. I think they're really, really needed. But they're also good fun to use as well. And unless you have absolutely millions of them, they're also not overpowered, which I think is a, a perfect addition to an army, something that's fun to use, but not something that's so devastating that people don't want to play against it have you got any in your army are you planning to have any in your army what are you planning to have in your army really interested in what people are running with their dwarves right now or what other old world army projects you're working on so please let me know in the comments below um, i always love to hear to people talking about their armies mine's getting towards finish now at least my first 2000 point army very very little left to paint and at time of recording i may even have it ready before launch just waiting on that new king on shield bearers if you'd like to talk about all those things in far more depth than you can in the YouTube comments, hop over to the channel's Discord. It's a super friendly place to talk about anything in Wargaming, regardless of the system. There's a link in the video description. And I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel further. So and there's a link for that there. Thank you to all my existing patrons. They're always super, super friendly and super helpful. I really do appreciate all they do to support the channel. Um, and if you've just enjoyed the video, please just give it a like. Um, give us a comment below it really really helps you don't have to throw money at me via patreon but anyway thank you very much for watching take care and i'll catch you soon